Hello and welcome. I'm George Constantinidis, Managing Director of MVO Engineering. And today I have the honor and privilege to be talking to Ed Clifford from Philofab. Philofab are known for their desktop extruding system, which has proven to be very efficient and very popular with the 3D printing market. Ed, please tell us a bit about your machines. Hi right, George, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I'm the Managing Director of Philofab. We've created four machines. Um, starting from the entry level 100 model all the way up to the 350 model, which is this one. Uh, typically people are using them to recycle materials, save money by producing their own filament. One thing that we've been seeing a lot of chatter on is uh, people recycling shampoo bottles or bottles or even plastic from their own uh, three, failed 3D prints. Yeah. What is the truth in being able to recycle shampoo bottles? Yeah, so what you've got here is a miniature industrial based extruder system. So the whole concept is to reduce the dependency in oil. So if plastic's being created already, if we can recycle it without creating new plastic, great. And this is what you can do with this. So just take your shampoo bottle, crush it up into small pieces, feed it through the extruder and create filament with it. And you can print directly from that. Is now, there a dependency on the, the material type? So I know when you turn a, but the bottle, a shampoo bottle or anything plastic upside down, yeah. you do see the, uh, the recycle mark or uh, the, the name of the filament, That's the, right. not the filament, but the plastic the used plastic. to create it. Uh, is there a dependency? Is there a limitation to what we can extrude with the, with the filler fat? Uh, yes, there is. Some materials um, you can recycle more easily. Some are a little trickier. Some we'd recommend you avoid altogether, but most of them, a lot of them, HDP for example, it's um, your milk bottles, uh, very, very easy to recycle. So you can just crush it up. And like you say, look at the symbol, you can uh, identify what plastic it is. If it's um, HDP for example, you can crush that up, slice it up, feed it through the machine, um, and you'll create filament uh, you know, for free basically. And at the same time, you're doing something good for the environment. Would you like to talk us through each individual element of the, the system? Yeah, of course. So to begin with, you've got the extruder. So you start off by adding your pellets to the hopper and then set the temperature. Um, once up to temperature, you can start the motor. Um, of course, you've got the uh, emergency stop if necessary. So moving over, you've got the, uh, this is where the filament will actually come out. It's a nozzle. That's interchangeable, so you can swap it out for any size you need, really. So as the filament is extruded, it will pass through the laser sensor. Now the laser sensor monitors the position of the filament and it actually controls the winding system directly. So it will feed back through this loop, through filler pull and into the winder. Now in this mode, filler pull's just being acting, acting as a guide, but it, it's, it does actually have some sensors on it as well. So this sensor here, for example, will monitor the width of the filament in real time. There's a motor here we can engage, which will actually start pulling the filament through at a consistent rate. Um, in this mode, however, it's just going to pass straight through and onto the spool itself. Now, all this is controlled directly from the winder. And you've got a control panel here, which uh, allows you to set that up. So, all in all, you've got options to produce the filament you need by setting it up in various ways. All machines are built around the same chassis um, and the 350 models have got the same motor. However, the EX uh, model has slightly more power and it got a slightly more powerful heater. So it's used for slightly more demanding applications. So, you know, different polymers, you know, require slightly higher temperature. So maybe you go for the EX model. Um, the EX is also compatible with some future product releases, um, which uh, we can discuss another time, I think. So Ed, you've talked to us about the machine and its capabilities. Who would most benefit or who is your typical customer? That's a good question. Um, and it's quite varied actually. Um, but typically, people buy for one of three reasons. Typically, there's your um, laboratories, materials labs, who maybe they're creating a new material, or maybe a new filament, and they want to test small batches. So they can run, they can compound small batches, run small amounts of filament, keep the cost down, and just perfect their master batch. Uh, there's also uh, R&D labs who maybe they're creating a new type of sports uh, wear or something. So they're experimenting with a type of plastic or some sort of polymer. So again, perfecting it, producing custom batches, and, and really, you know, 
find the answers for you know lowering their costs really um, and you can do it all on their desktop right there in their lab uh, so that's point one uh, point two it's just the user the 3d hub the guy with 10 printers who's just producing parts all day long and he wants to lower his filament costs so he could buy one of our machines buy a ton of material virgin or recycled pellets and he can just he can produce um, you know 3d printed parts for you know three or four pounds a kilo so massive, massive reduction in cost. So, and, and you can see cost savings in you know, you know, very short period of time. So that's number two. Number three is the person who wants to recycle. So if you've got a leftover, you know, perhaps you're in an industry and you've got a, left, a lot of leftovers, a lot of offcuts. Perhaps um, there's a lot of a byproduct is, is a plastic waste. Well, you can take that waste and you can recycle it there and then on the plants, reuse it, pelletize it, produce new products with it. Um, so really it's, um, yeah, it's lifting your green credentials or maybe you've got the artist who's taking some sort of taking used cable ties and producing 3D printed parts or you know, all sorts of varied things. So you know, testing, experimentation, saving money and recycling, they're the big number three. There are loads of other. I'll add another one to that. Yeah. So I can see this one being a f fantastic tu tool for educators. Oh yeah. So schools uh, that have bought into or trying to promote the STEM, so the um, uh, science, technology, engineering, and, ma and mathematics. Yeah. Uh, it's a very big thing lately because we know that in Britain there seems to be a shortage of people with these skills or at least not enough kids mm. going into it. Yeah. And I can see that uh, a British product going into that area of education uh, being hugely beneficial. Have you had much to do with schools and the extruders? Uh, yeah, so we've got a lot of uh, machines in universities already. Um, we're looking at higher education and schools, and there's a, there's a few uh, takers. Um, our plan is really to show them the whole life cycle, so you can take your parts, you can grind it up, extrude it, wind it, print with it, and it's it, full circle. And it, it just is a, yeah, like you say, a great tool for educating, so you can just see the entire life cycle of a plastic. And there are some plastics which you can continue, the, the circle completes, so you can continually reuse and recycle. Um, so yeah, it's a great tool for that. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, we've had a lovely time here, Ed. Thank you for coming down, George. And you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of Philofab, both from Philofab themselves and from MVA Engineering. Have a good day. Thank you.